Hey everybody, hey uh, all you new subs, nice to see you guys. Uh, this was gonna try to make a video real quick that uh, sort of maybe adds a little bit on to that whole uh, thing I mentioned to Vernaculus about how it gets really, really difficult to be charitable to people in YouTube comment sections and how sometimes you just gotta know when to quit even if like you're the guy who's winning just because it gets really ugly I, I got this person I don't know exactly what nationality they are since they're defending some comments I've made criticizing UK equality laws especially the ones they have that are sort of geared towards speech where I've criticized these laws repeatedly even before the ba Bahar Mustafa or however the fuck you say your name before the whole I stand with Bahar Mustafa thing because like I said I'm a big time free speech advocate and let's face it in the UK you can be arrested for unpopular speech even if it's not violent I mean here, here in America it's legal to be a racist and sometimes you gotta wonder exactly how legal that is in the UK. Now, nobody thinks it's moral to be a racist, but since when was it the government's job to legislate morality? But anyway, even though I find that really reprehensible, you know, I'm going to read you guys a couple comments here, and you'll find out that the reason why I got really pissed at this guy is because he didn't know what he was talking about. And that's why, you know, I totally forgave... Uh, Vernaculus for really dropping the hammer on me because I didn't exactly know what I was talking about and I was being a petulant douche and so uh, here I'm getting a little taste of my own medicine so enjoy here we go I'm not gonna out and out link this guy but uh, he's apparently called a uh, Ginsington Schneiser if you could figure out how to spell that then maybe you've earned the right to bother the guy I generally don't uh, don't uh, name people who are retarded but uh, people do it to me so I don't know. We'll try it out. So, I made a video that was basically pro I stand with Bahar Mustafa, the hashtag uh, supporting Bahar Mustafa that has somewhat uh, unilateral support from both feminists and anti-feminists due to general disgust for the uh, equality and blasphemy laws in the UK that are essentially eroding those people's human right to free speech over there across the pond. I don't believe you should ever be arrested for what you say unless it is a direct physical threat. Bahar Mustafa made none. It's a fact. And if you disagree with that, well, maybe you should have a listen at my argument with Mr. Schneiser. Mr. Schneiser says, Actually, Bahar did do something wrong according to law and order. You seem to be applying United States laws to the United Kingdom. Perhaps you should try and not be so bigoted to the UK and to accept the fact that they're not the U.S. Secondly, yes, the U.S. does have free speech, which originally didn't apply to the citizens, but nowadays everyone thinks it does. But this does not mean it's the correct way. The U.S. fucks up on an awful lot of things. Now keep in mind that he expressed a morally relativistic opinion there. This will be relevant later. But I replied, I don't know what in the fuck you're talking about. Regardless of the absolutely ridiculous claim that the First Amendment was not intended for U.S. citizens, and regardless of what United Kingdom law is, what is happening to Bahar Mustafa is immoral and unjust. The U.K. government has made several ridiculous laws based around bullshit political correctness, but the idea that a government can charge you with anything for what you say is not just unjust, it is outright evil. That doesn't make me a bigot in the slightest. Schneiser responds, You're condemning people for thinking opposite of you, and that's bigotry. Give me a second. <clears throat> okay. Secondly, the First Amendment was originally put into the Constitution to prevent journalists from being hindered in their job. Give me a second. Okay. The First Amendment was originally put into the Constitution to prevent journalists from being hindered in their job. They didn't want someone to be targeted for the things they put out in the papers. Finally, I would really like you to prove how this, meaning the, the 
UK laws are immoral. Mr. Schneiser, you do not know what you were talking about at all. Information on the Bill of Rights is a Google search away. So is a search for the definition of bigotry. Gensington responds, Bigotry, intolerance towards those who hold different opinions from yourself. You seem pretty intolerant of the UK's belief that speech isn't free. One sec. Sorry for repeatedly interrupting the narrative flow. I can't help myself. You seem pretty intolerant of the UK's belief that speech isn't free. Please explain why that's not bigotry. Also, are you going to attempt to prove the immorality of censorship, or is it just a BS claim you feel you can throw around? I respond to Mr. Schneiser. You're a moron. I'm not going to sit here and listen to you call me a bigot for disagreeing with you. Schneiser responds, Lol, you failed to prove the immorality of what was going on, and you're just being a bigot towards the UK, not me. I, I can't even tell if this is a British person or just a moron. That's Just because... Wait, wait. Just because we disagree does not make you a bigot towards me. So he just contradicted himself. Schneiser, hopefully, may, uh, uh, me saying to Schneiser, hopefully nobody makes having the opinions you hold a crime, dumbass. Then we shall see how you like going to jail for thought crime. Schneiser responds, speaking and thought are two different things. I know your pseudo-intellectual mind probably can't understand that at this point... But it's lovely how pathetic you've been during this exchange. I've asked you to simply prove your stance, and yet you can't do that. It seems as if you understand your bigotry is indefensible. <clears throat> this is hard. I'm sorry. I respond to Mr. Schneiser. No, I'm baffled by your ignorance and the fact that you are defending restriction of free speech. Since you know so little about what you are talking about, it's likely you don't understand what you are advocating. You are so stupid, you don't understand the consequences of making it a crime to say things. If you had an ounce of humility, intellectual honesty, or curiosity, I would explain this to you. When you've repeatedly demonstrated that you have no fucking clue what you're talking about, and are petulant about being corrected, and can't be bothered to even read the First Amendment of the United States Constitution... You're a five-second Google search away from being slightly less retarded. Instead, you are wasting my time. I'm done here. I, of course, was wrong. We'll see here because of what he says here. Schneiser responds, Get off the First Amendment. We're talking about the UK, you moron. Please stop being such a... He tries to sound smart by using a big word. Okay, this one I actually haven't heard used in a while. Pusillanimous. Give me a second. I am going to live on air. Google pusillanimous. Definition. Lack of courage or determination. Timid. Impressive vocabulary, retard. This proves that big words don't always make big minds. Okay, let me start over. Schneiser responds, Get off the First Amendment. We're talking about the UK, you moron. Please stop being such a pusillanimous cunt and actually prove your fucking claims. You're expecting me to be mindlessly brainwashed by the U.S. belief in free speech. Uh, Vernaculus, if you're watching, is at least that a straw man? Or is that some other uh, fancy fallacy for being a retard? Brainwashing him. <laughs> man, sometimes you gotta feel bad about how fucked over America is in the world opinion. To, it doesn't pay that bad shit gets on social media more often. I'm sorry, over here in America, we hear a lot of dumb shit about other countries. Um, I don't know. This is me talking about a dumb shit thing happening in another country. But it's about the dumb shit thing. As I respond to Schneiser, No, we are talking about freedom of speech and how I think it is immoral and evil to make laws forbidding people from speaking their minds. Schneiser responds, and I'm almost begging you to prove that immorality. 
And I respond to Schneiser, immorality is a matter of opinion. However, a supposedly democratic country with a government elected by the people should not infringe upon the human right of the citizens to have and express an opinion, even if that opinion is offensive. All it takes is for a whole bunch of people who disagree with you to get elected, make your opinion illegal, and then it's off to jail with you. If you dare to express that p opinion publicly, that is. And Schneiser claiming the moral high ground and throwing up his hands like a boxer who just got the shit kicked out of him but thinks that might sway the judges' minds. I'm leaving you all to be the judges. Cool. Thanks for admitting to not have, being able to defend your position. Have a great day. P.S. You see how much bullshit we would have avoided if you'd just been honest from the beginning? Morality, ladies and gentlemen, is subjective. There are certain things that we all almost universally agree upon. That being, like, don't kill people, don't steal things that aren't yours. Things like free speech can be a little bit of a gray area. You can't yell fire in a crowded theater. You can't call in bomb threats. You can't make jokes about bombs in the airport. That one's a little bit of a stretch, but at least still remains in the gray area. And you can't threaten people with direct violence. Bahar Mustafa did none of those things. She expressed an opinion that says that the world would be better off if there were no white men. She used a hashtag that is not a direct threat towards anybody so that says kill all white men. She n had not elaborated anything that said she intended to or wanted anybody to kill white people. And that is probably what got her hung up. The problem is, is that no article I've read says that she was charged with making terroristic threats or anything like that. She was charged with hate speech. Now, even though I think being a racist is wrong and evil, I think being a sexist is wrong and evil, and I think being a bigot is wrong, maybe not necessarily evil, because that's much more defensible as a, pos a position based on ignorance and not a complete lack of human empathy. Bahar Mustafa is a racist, a sexist, and a bigot. But she's not a terrorist. She didn't threaten anybody. And all she, all that's really happened here is Bahar Mustafa has been arrested and charged with a crime for holding an unsavory opinion, for being offensive, for all the wacky bullshit that goes on in us fucked up America. And there's one thing we do right, and that's actual free speech. The United Kingdom, if you guys would like to not see a future uh, where you... <clears throat> what's the word I'm looking for? Where you aren't thrown in jail for what you think because a bunch because you hold an unpopular opinion and the government is ha uh, staffed by a majority of people who strongly disagree with you, then perhaps you should limit your government's right with your vote and with your what free speech you still have to say that, no, this is not okay, that it's not okay for a country that has a problem with uh, Muslim rape gangs grooming white, uh, grooming young, teenaged, underage white girls to be raped and sexually molested, and they don't police this problem because the policemen are terrified of being called racist. You think maybe you are might be being fair and balanced by arresting a social Marxist, postmodernist, feminist piece of racist dog shit. But I would not have you arrest a neo-Nazi or a feminist or a Holocaust denier or a, a PETA member or a Greenpeace or a war protester or anything. I would not have you arrest people for what they say. If they're not making a terrorist threat, if they're not making egregious libel, if they're not terrorizing the public with hoaxes, then they should be left alone. We do that here in America. The ACLU, which is a, a freedom of speech advocacy group that with a lot of pull and power here in America, that has been very focused, particularly on, anti on defending Jewish people from anti-Semitism, def famously defended the Ku Klux Klan's rally in a state and defended their right to have that rally with the Ku Klux Klan being one of the most openly and egregiously anti-Semitic organizations on the face of the planet.
Why? Because freedom of speech is justice and censorship is injustice. Thank you for watching.